So let us start by introducing the concept of amplifier. An amplifier is a circuit where the output signal is an amplification of the input signal. So what does that mean? If we have an amplifier and this amplifier will take an, an input signal, this input signal is a voltage that is called VI. It could be a current as well, but we decided to make it a voltage. And then this amplifier will take this input signal, VI, and will send it to the output, which is the voltage across this resistor that is called RO. And the output signal is the output voltage, VO. So the amplifier takes the input signal at the input and amplifies it, which means makes it bigger, and send it to the output. So if you see, for example, the voltage at the input could be shown here by this small magnitude voltage and the amplifier going to amplify this input signal, which means going to make it bigger, then you may observe that the output signal, which is the voltage across the resistor, is amplified, which means became bigger at the output. Basically, amplifiers take the input signal and make it bigger or amplify it and then send it to the output. Ideal amplifiers are linear. What does that mean? Basically, it says that V out is proportional to V i. And if you take the proportionality and replace it with the proportionality constant, then we can state that V out will equal to A times V i, where A is called the gain of the amplifier. That is basically the ratio of the output over the input. The gain tells us how many times the output is bigger than the input. So how many times the output is bigger than the input is the gain. Actual amplifiers are nonlinear. So let me show you that through a graph. If we would like to plot V out versus VI, and we would like to plot the relationship between VI and V out, you can see that it could be governed by this curve. Different amplifiers will have different curve. We call it the voltage transfer curve. So if we look at the voltage transfer curve, it is clear that the relationship between the input and the output is nonlinear. We can express this curve using a power series. So we can say that V out will equal to a0 plus A1 times VI plus A2 times VI squared plus A3 times VI cubed and so on. So it is clear that from this equation that V out is not a function of VI only, but it is also a function of VI squared, VI cubed, VI to the power of 4, VI to the power of 6, and so on. So the relationship between the output and the input is nonlinear. Now we engineers like to use simple models, but they work. One way to achieve that is we are going to simplify this realistic model. So the real world is more tedious and more complex. As a first step approximation, we are going to simplify this model and we do that by using assumptions. So if VI is less than 1, which is small, then VI squared is even smaller, and VI cubed is even smaller, and VI to the 4 is even smaller. So now we can ignore these high-order terms. 
the vi squared and the vi cubed and the vi to the power of 4 and so on can be ignored. So let us state that actual amplifiers are approximated to be linear by ignoring the higher order term and this approximation is valid for small vi. Then we can say that v out will equal to a0 plus a1 times vi. Now a0 is the DC offset which may be blocked using DC coupling capacitors. Now the output voltage will equal to A1 times VI. Now it is clear that the output voltage is directly proportional to the input voltage. So basically what we said here is an amplifier is a device or a circuit that will take the input signal and amplify it, makes it bigger, and send it to the output. Then we said that ideal amplifiers are linear. However, the real-world amplifiers are nonlinear. And we can approximate or assume the amplifier is linear by making sure that VI or the input signal is very small. And that's all what we said so far.